Hello everyone and thanks for tuning into the Financial Investor channel. My name is Brent and today we're going to be covering three questions a viewer and subscriber asked in the comment section below of one of my videos. So if you are brand new to the channel, I do make stock market, personal finance and real estate investment videos every single week and let's go ahead and get into it. Now, if this video does help you, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, but I see this topic come up a lot. So instead of answering him specifically, I wanted to make this video targeted towards new investors, get into the market 2018, 2019 and beyond. So these three questions, Hey, question number one, I want to start investing in my in the market, 50% of my portfolio towards VU, 50% of my portfolio towards income stocks. Do you think that's a great suggestion? And my response to that question is if you're a brand new investor my opinion is that you should have 80 to 100 percent invested towards an etf my etf suggestions are vu and vti vu of course has 512 stocks tracking the s p 500 index vti has some of the higher uh, same of the, some of the same holdings as the vu but it has some 2000 indexes uh 2000 stocks including some of the smaller mid cap stocks and some of the large cap stocks as well. So it gives you a bigger range of stocks, but if you're just looking for a good return that a lot of investors pick up, aim for VU initially, 80 to 100% of your portfolio. Why? Well, if you're brand new into the market and you've put in $1,000, this is your entire savings into the market, and you invested, you follow some YouTubers out there, they're discussing buying Alibaba, Tesla, General Electric, uh, JD.com and this stock, you know, General Electric fell 50% this year. Alibaba, JD are down, what, 40% this year? Maybe, I don't know, I don't follow them. But if you follow these YouTubers and investors out there that are doing all these crazy things, even my portfolio could look crazy for a new investor out there looking at someone's portfolio. Oh, you have a bunch of single stock allocations. Why do you do that? Well, if you did this and you're not emotionally ready, your $1,000 could quickly become... $750, $500, or even less if the markets completely tank as a whole. You could go down to $400, losing 40% of your equity in a lot of these stocks. You know, 40, 50% of 1000 you go down to 500 bucks really quick if you pick that wrong single stock allocation. Now, if you're invested in the market, S&P 500 is a good example. If you invested in 1994, 98, 2000, 2002, 2008, and are currently invested where do you think your portfolio has gone over the long term over the over the last over there you know if you haven't invested at that period and then increase it by 5 10 15 years your portfolio would have recovered the entire amount plus had gained some if you had been invested on the way down if you had been invested on the way up you would have averaged in and over the long term you would have gone nowhere else but up here i have an example of the s p s p 500 this is ticker symbol spy has been out since 1994. you can see these little gray periods here these are the recessions here i've added them in here for this example so i could take them out i could add them in but the recessions happened in what 2002 2003 stock market tanked 40 percent lost there 2007 2008 stock market tanked even further we lost 50 60 percent there in the market now, if you had been invested in the stock market as a whole since that period, yes, it would have been really hard to handle emotionally. But if you had continued to invest, averaged on your way down, averaged on your way up, you would have averaged out of balance. You would have lowered your unit costs going down, maybe increased your unit costs going up. But you'd have a balance there over the long term had you been investing during that downturn. Now, over the long term, where has that portfolio gone if you attract the S&P 500, that index? Well, you have gone up. And we had a lot of consolidation here between 2000, or 1998 and 2013. We consolidated for a very long time. So just like any other stocks, if there's a lot of consolidation and there's a breakout, well, this, this market's going to continue higher. What happened here in 2017, 2018, we had tax reform. So this market, it stayed at a stale state for quite a while. So where do you think that we're going to be heading out? And, you know, we're breaking out now just for the last five years. People are saying, oh, we've been in the bull market for 10 years. But where were we for the last 13 years, you know, prior to really going into this market here? The market didn't really top and continue breaking out until 2013. We trended sideways for such a long time that we're finally breaking out. We have tax reform. We could see the markets continue to chug higher and higher over the next five, 10 years. This, this uh, bull market could be the start 
but we don't really know. But over the long term, you do know that if the markets do fall 50, 40 percent, the markets will recover. And if you have 5, 10, 15, 30 years to invest, the markets will recover. You'll move higher. You'll average down. You'll average up and you'll be richer in the end. <laughs> So that kind of answered question number three. I'm looking to get started investing 10 to 15% of my income in something long term, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. Is it safe? A lot of people have heard, you know, the, my coworkers hear us discussing stocks that we're investing in, whether it be Apple, the S&P 500 as a whole. And they've asked us in the past, hey, is an investment in stock markets like gambling? And no, it's not because we show them the graphs over the long term. People are investing in their 401ks. They don't even know what they're investing in, but they look at it over 5, 10 years, and they've only moved up 4 or 5%. That's because these expense ratios, or not the expense ratios, but these, these 401ks, they have some sometimes some high fees associated with them. They also stick them in some terrible funds that do nothing for them. And at least if you're investing, if you actually look at, and become financially educated and begin looking at what you're investing in your 401k, your Roth IRA, all these other little accounts. And it's not, it's, it's safe. It, it's safe in a sense because over the next five, 10 years, we've already looked at the graph, the markets recover 100% of the time. So here back in my, the first question, my response, invest 80 to 100% towards an ETF. My response there would be VU or VTI. If Use your first one or two years as a brand new investor, learning, building up your financial education, buying some books, reading some, uh, you know, go over to Amazon, read a couple books, follow a couple YouTubers that are value investors, growth investors. Don't follow their advice as far as what they're specifically investing in, but come up with your own plan of how to read balance sheets, how to go over quarterly reports, yearly reports, you know, what to look for during conference calls, you know, what is that single stock doing over the long term? What are they investing in? You know, what segments are moving them for, forward? Products and services that they're doing that are moving them forward. Will they be useful in the next 5, 10, 15 years? Will people actually be using them? Those are questions you should be asking yourself when you're investing in single stocks. But for the most part, stick with ETFs initially and then build up your financial education. Begin adding some single stock allocations. You may look at my portfolio and you're like, hey, Brent, you have 16 stocks in here that are sing uh, single stock allocations. But this is only a front end. You know, this is what $9,000 of this portfolio is sitting within this Roth IRA. This makes up a very small percentage of our total equity invested in the stock market. I also have a thrift savings plan. My wife and I both have Roth 401ks. I also have an IRA, a, my own Roth IRA. We have taxable accounts as well. I created my business. I own two real estate properties now. So this makes up as a whole, as far as the stock market goes, this makes up maybe 10%, 20% of our total equity invested in the stock market. So the remainder, we make like 60 to 80% is invested in ETFs. You know, my Roth 401k tracking the S&P 500 and another fund as well. My thrift savings plan tracking the S&P 500 as well. So this is a small percentages that we like to pick single stock allocations and invest in them because we believe that these are some strong companies. They make up 20, 30% of our total portfolio because we know we've kind of learned how to research and build our single stock allocations up to sort of either keep up with the market or beat the market as a whole. And of course, I like collecting dividends. This is sort of like a little um, hobby of mine, kind of building up a dividend portfolio. So that is that. So question number one, I would suggest an 80 to 100 investment in an ETF and then building up your financial education, learning to read balance sheets, quarterly reports, yearly reports, knowing what the segments are, what they're growing, sitting in some conference calls and listening to them and you know, then begin to add single stock allocations that you believe will do well and help you beat the average returns of the market. Question number two, when I invest into the market monthly, how much of my percentage goes towards VU or how much of my percentage would go towards the rest of my stocks? So here, we'll use two stocks here, for example, Cisco and Apple. That's a terrible example. Okay, let's use all, Apple and Walmart. We'll say that Apple, we'll say that 7% is 97, well, 47%. 
Uh, let's see here, 50-50. Okay, we'll say, that, okay, their target percentages are the same. They're the 7%. Let's imagine that both of these companies are sitting at 50% at target percentages. Now, actually, Apple is down by 0.6. So instead of 50%, say it's at 46.4. No, yeah, 44.4. It's uh, 46.4. It's down 0.6%. And then we have Walmart here. That's down 0.7% from its target percentages. If you were to add $100 into the market, M1 Finance, Betterment, a lot of those robo-advisor companies out there that would invest your money for you, they would look over your portfolio, say, okay, actual percentages of equity. Okay, Apple here is sitting at a less, uh, it's actually a higher actual equity than a Walmart here at a 6.3%. Let's just use it as they are. So Walmart is sitting at a less equity position, actual equity in comparison to its target. So if these are the only stocks in question, M1 Finance would would fill Walmart initially first. If there was only $10 going in, it may bump up what, $20 here. There's $20 here between these two. You can see $558, $570. If we added $10 into this into this account, it would only probably target Walmart with that $10 because $10 would put them at $568. That would still be below $570. So that would probably bump them up right about to the 6.4 percentages of equity. So if you are invested here, this was VU and this was your single stocks and VU came down 3% in a day, but your other stocks did really well and actually moved higher because maybe you were invested in some oil, some utilities and some that, that did really well in comparison to the S&P 500. You put it in 100 bucks the next day, it would probably go towards the S&P 500 because the actual equity would be lower than your target percentages because these other ones that have done really well had actually moved over, their actual percentages had moved over the target percentages and then your VU, which had gone down for the day, would actually have been targeted by your new funds. I made a video going on how money is invested in the M1 Finance. I'll try and look for it and link it in the top right corner. So I hope I answered these questions as quick as I could. The 12-minute video, 15-minute video. So brand new investors going into the market start off with an 80 to 100% uh, ETF. My exam, you know, my opinions there, VU and VTI, you know that 100% of the markets will recover 100% of the time. So this will help you build up your emotional shield, just knowing, oh man, I got hammered, I'm down 10% today, but it's okay. I have five, 10, 15, 30 years to, you know, tell I'm actually gonna be retiring. I have lots of time in the market. I know that the market will go down. I know that the market will go up. I'm not worried about the short term. I will buy those dips and I will continuously add into the market. And over the long term, I will be better off because I would have lowered my unit costs initially going down with the market. And then I would have averaged up with the market. And uh, over the long term, it would have increased. And then number two, we've already talked about how M1 Finance and those robo-advisors invest depending on how your actual and target percentages of your portfolio sits. And then is the stock market safe? Or is it a gamble, risky environment? Well, if you're investing 80 to 100% of your portfolio, targeting the S&P 500 index, yes, the index does go down at times. If we go into a crazy crash, we lose 40%, 50% of our equity. That is just equity. You still own the same exact shares that you've bought. No one's going to take those shares away from you. If you have the stomach and the gut to average on the way down and you average on the way up, guess who's going to be better off over the long term? That's going to be you who's better off. So that is all for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you guys did enjoy it, of course, give it a thumbs up button below. Share it with your friends. And if you are brand new to my channel, again, I do make stock market, personal finance, real estate investment videos every single week. So consider subscribing. And if you guys do have questions, leave them in the comment sections below. If you guys agree, disagree with me, let me know in the comment section below. I see a lot of investors out there following YouTubers following advice online that speaks about buying single stock allocations. I buy single stock allocations in this portfolio. Again, it makes up a small percentage of my total equity I have involved in the market. And that's because, you know, that's why I have these single stock allocations. But as a whole, I still highly suggest I'm invested at least what 60 to an 80% of my equity in ETFs and funds. So that is all I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you guys for tuning in. I will see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.